funded by the Public Investment Fund, Saudi Aramco and Sabic, with the aim of helping bring in industries to the country that help oh. diversify. Okay. So, يعني, it's unique. Uh, it doesn't compete with the private sector. It complements and it partners with the private sector. And we focus on a few key uh, sectors. Industrial. Hmm? Industrial. Industrial, yeah. yeah. High-end high in, in, uh, industry, renewables, okay. uh, high-end uh, industrial services, including the Internet of Things and industrial oh. digitization. Okay. And uh, also we get into uh, the conversion industries. Okay. Hmm? That will help diversify. Help. So that's, that's where we're focusing on. Is that your brainchild? إن شاء الله لا 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 هذه فيه التجمعات الصناعية I don't know if you've heard about it the industrial cluster program they were doing a lot of studies but they were lacking an investment arm so the government created this investment arm to help them diversify we're just going to talk about what you thought of were the key factors to drive economic diversification in the country The, the, the kingdom and the region is embarking on economic diversification and it's no longer a luxury, it's a must. Mm -hmm. uh, the region uh, primarily depends on one source of income, uh, one source of a natural resource, uh, the population is young and uh, the government uh, uh, budget cannot continue to rely on one source of income. So diversification is extremely, extremely important for the region. Uh, all countries recognize that and uh, embarked on uh, different uh, programs. Saudi Arabia launched Vision 2030, uh, very ambitious, uh, but at the same time uh, bold. And uh, key elements of the diversification, I think, blends in what we see global and, uh, and what is uh, regional. Uh, globally, we're seeing a major shift in powers from the developed economies to the emerging economies. And the region is at the heart of the trade routes between uh, these. So we can play a critical role uh, leveraging this, this shift by being a good trade uh, partners with all these through establishing efficient logistics and providing uh, also manufacturing uh, hubs. Uh, another element of diversification is the fact that uh, we're a large economy and there are significant localization opportunities that will make it viable for high-tech industries to come and get established in the region and in Saudi Arabia and with the clear government uh, commitment on such localizations investment uh, would come. Uh, the third element is the fact that while the world is aging we have a young population which we can uh, uh, leverage and use them as a source uh, uh, through uh, creation of jobs, jobs that are high-end because our population is tech-savvy. And this is the fourth element, which is the fact that there, are, there will be and there are significant technolog technological breakthroughs happening. And therefore, we don't need to start where people have started. We can leapfrog and initiate uh, programs that can benefit from uh, these uh, technologies. Localization is definitely the answer for, to diversification, uh, or one of the main answers to diversification. Absolutely. What would you put, uh, what do you consider the main challenges to, uh, uh, to, to, to implementing a uh, localization. program of localization speedily? Key element in enabling uh, localization uh, programs is for the government to signal the business community about the key sectors and the key elements that they want to localize and designing clear and transparent and effective incentives. Uh, so if the kingdom says, look, I want to localize digital equipment Uh, uh, medical equipment and uh, equipment, uh, medical devices mm -hmm. and I want to localize uh, uh, pharmaceuticals and I want to localize automotive and aviation spare parts uh, or uh, marine uh, manufacturing. By announcing that and making a commitment to procure from those locally manufactured material with the right commitment to enable them to get business established. Uh, we're really not talking about 
significant financial incentives. The, the, what the investors are looking for is a clear signal that this is a priority sector for the country, that there are smart incentives to enable them to get an established presence, and also that there is a commitment by the government in its procurement to include provisions that recognizes the value add of locally manufactured materials. Yeah, no, absolutely. Um, so uh, my question was about the chal uh, the, any challenges that you foresee in uh, pursuing a diversification. For diversification. Okay. So uh, the ch the challenges is um, if if there is no clarity mm. on what sectors or if there are no commitments from the government to procure uh, such materials. Uh, from a diversification standpoint, in general, the biggest uh, challenge is either lack of focus or inability to execute. And this is the biggest challenge that would face any country that is embarking on a, a vision. What do you mean with lack of focus? If you look at Vision 2030, it aims to uh, diversify the economy and they've identified, I think, 13 or 14 programs. The ability to translate these programs into actionable, measurable, and treat them like individual projects that will bring them to reality. So the ability to translate these into clearly focused initiatives and assigning the right resources for them will enable them to come to fruition. Let me ask you then what I think might be a challenge, skills and talent. Skills and talent. Skills and talent will always be a challenge. I, I can tell you, if you talk to any executive, mm. what is the biggest challenge and what is the primary focus that you have, they will tell you that focusing on attracting and developing a competitive talent. And uh, no ex executive should spare any effort in attracting and motivating and retaining the best talent. So let's just uh, shift now to the GCC, and you were the founding chairman mm -hmm. at the GCC BDI. BDI, right? yes. So you're the founding chairman. So it's been a 10-year journey. Reflecting on those 10 years, how do you how do you evaluate this journey now? I feel very proud to see uh, GCC BDI what it is today, and the event that we are witnessing today is a testimony to the achievement of the BDI. The, quality of people who are attending the chairman sum summit, the quality of uh, the participants, the panelists, uh, the keynote speakers, and the high level of recognition of what board effectiveness and good governance is uh, all about is a reflection of what BDI have been working hard at. It hasn't been an easy journey. I know that they have had a lot of challenges and a lot of difficulties, but today as I look, all the key stakeholders do recognize uh, GCC BDI, whether they are the re regulators, the big government institutions, uh, or the national champions in all uh, the founding uh, countries, as well as the international uh, corporations that have supported. I want to congratulate them for uh, really working hard and what they have achieved. And what do you foresee for the next 10 years? In terms of governance, uh, GCC BDI is poised to be the thought leader, partnering with all the regulatory bodies in, in the region and really advancing a, a much deeper uh, and region-specific governance and board effectiveness issues. Thank you so much. Thank you.